Hello everyone. In this video, I want to talk a little bit about the Macintosh 512K that you see up here on the desk. It's got a little bit of a story to it, and I'm doing some work and have a couple of little plans for this thing uh, over the next couple of days. May or may not make a video of them, but just wanted to talk about them in this video. This will, of course, be a, a long talky video in which I'll probably just point the camera just as I'm doing now and talk for about 15 minutes, so be prepared for that. Um, so first of all, what, what are we looking at here? So this is a completely stock Macintosh 512K, a keyboard, uh, the M0110 keyboard, and an M0100 mouse. This all came as a uh, complete set along with the bag and um, all the original manuals. There's a, an audio uh, cassette in there with a guided tour. It came with a guided tour disc, Mac Write, Mac Paint, all sorts of cool stuff. And uh, whoa, sorry, what? Damn camera. There we go. Uh, and it's all in really good shape. Now the only couple of issues with this system um, are that, first of all, it's pretty yellow. You can see that even when not compared to something that's white, although I guess the desk is kind of a whitish. Maybe if it were a Mac, it would be more of a platinum color, this desk top. Um, but it is quite yellow, as expected. I mean, it's very old at this point. What, 1985? So that's 35 years old, right? Can't really do math, but yeah, uh, getting kind of yellow. Might do something about that in the future. Not really sure. Uh, I'm probably just going to keep it as is right now because although I am putting some money and some time into getting this thing up and working as I want it to, I probably won't end up using it all that much and it'll just end up going back in the bag. So we'll see where that goes. Let's talk about the keyboard quickly because it's here. Um, so this is, uh, of course, the original keyboard that came with it. And when I got it, it had two issues. First of all, it was missing the zero key. Um, three issues, I guess. Missing the zero key and the stock of the key was broken off. I'm trying to see if I can find it here. Where did I put it? Oh, I put it in the bag. There it is. So there was the, the zero key. Um, stock broken off of the top of that, so fortunately that switch is no good. And the N key, um, I don't know if I can show that at all, but it's got a lot of wobble to it. And it was broken off on the inside, unfortunately it wasn't making any contact, the N key just didn't work at all. So I ordered a new, uh, well two new switches, they are the same exact switches, and my N key will fit nicely back on there. I also ordered the zero key. Now each one of the switches cost me $15. They are tested and working, so I guess that's fine. And I think the key switch, or the key cap rather, um, probably cost me $8 free shipping. So more money than I had intended to spend, but I didn't have much of a choice when it came to parts on eBay at least. Um, probably could have looked around maybe on some Facebook groups, but whatever. Um, they're on their way now, so I'm gonna fix that up. This keyboard, by the way, was extremely easy to, first of all, disassemble. There's five screws to take the top cover off, and then uh, there are, well, no screws to get this out. This just kind of sits there, and um, each key is soldered in just with two spots, so that was very quick to desolder, fortunately. So I'll be rebuilding that whenever the key comes in and get this back together. The mouse, uh, other than being a little bit yellow and probably needing a little bit of a cleaning, works perfectly fine, no issues there. So I'll probably clean off the rollers um, a little bit. The ball is fine. I mean, it's a mouse ball. They don't usually get too gummed up. It's usually just the rollers. And then we come to the system unit itself. Now there is a bit of a story between or behind this whole computer in a bag. 
which I will try to remember to tell you at some point. Um, I have had this thing apart a couple of times. One when I first got it about eight years ago, and one just two days ago when I was servicing the floppy drive and taking a look at everything inside. As it is, this is completely functional. I'll go ahead and plug it in right now. Give it a power on. I don't know how the screen will react with the shutter speed of the camera, but we'll find out in a minute. Um, I mean, it works absolutely fine. The motherboard looks pristine. Uh, analog board looks pristine. The only thing to really maybe replace in the future is I believe it's got a Rifa cap um, for you know filtering power input or something like that and uh, over time they get bad and even just having the system plugged in that cap could explode and render the system unusable at least temporarily i'm gonna go ahead and shut this off maybe yeah just trying to get the flicker away from the camera um but as it is it works perfectly fine right now the crt is extremely sharp and uh, if i turn the brightness all the way up that's quite bright and I can turn it see that's I can just barely see it right there and that's a little below half brightness so you know maybe it could use a little bit of help um, but honestly I mean, the pictures so clear it's perfectly crisp geometry is just a little bit eh, kind of tilted to the right but other than that yeah the screen looks great so I'm super happy about that I really really didn't want to have to work on the CRT. Uh, when I had the floppy drive apart, all I really did was lubricate it. I scraped off all the old gummy lubricant and used some isopropyl to dissolve it a little bit, moved it back and forth, and just it kept kind of shedding off the old lubricant that was all gummy. So got all that taken care of. Uh, used some white lithium grease to re-lubricate it, and it works fine, ejects perfectly, and reads and writes without an issue. Sounds great, too. So, that's kind of cool that this thing actually works 100%. I'm trying to tilt it up a little bit and show you the... show you the serial. Maybe if uh, you pause the video... Let's see if I can get a better angle on that. Maybe. Trying to get to focus. There we go. Somebody wants to look that up and see when this was made or whatever, you're welcome to do that. Um, which I'm actually going to do after I put this video on the computer and do a little freeze frame of that clip. Because this computer was actually given to me, uh, the whole thing, by somebody who worked at Apple in the early 80s through the... I think mid-90s, maybe even up until 2000-ish. She didn't do anything technical. I think she was more on the business side of things, as far as I know. But she was at the release of the Macintosh, the Macintosh 128K. She was in that audience, you know, the video where Steve Jobs releases it and the Mac talks after he takes it out of the bag. She was in that audience, which is really cool, and she... In her words, she said it was the first time she ever felt like she was part of a cult. And I can totally understand that. Um, this particular unit was given to her, she said, by Steve Jobs himself. I don't know if there's any truth to that, but um, more than likely it was given to her by the company for use as an office machine. And she said when it was to be decommissioned, she was given the system, and she gave it to her daughter to use for college. Her daughter used it for a very long time, and then it came back and sat in their basement for many, many years until she met me and figured out or, uh, and learned that I was interested in this kind of old Mac stuff. So, yeah, I don't know if there's... I don't know if all of that is true or not, if this was really given to her by Steve Jobs. I have my doubts about that, but given to her by Apple, that is extremely likely. Um, she did work there at the time, so there is probably some truth to that. I'm going to look up that serial number and see if maybe it's an early number when these things were first getting released, if maybe I have an early serial number. That would be kind of cool. So yeah, um, 
my plans for this 512K? Well, I just purchased, it cost me $10, a brand new floppy with System 2 on it, as well as, I think it's bin hex and Mac Terminal, um, something like that. My plan, and I don't know if this is actually going to work, but my plan is to somehow connect this through serial to a modern Mac and try to either read or write software to floppies because right now my issue is that I don't have any um, intermediary Macs to write software. I sold my Power Mac 7300 and 7500 years ago. Those had the floppy disk super drive. So a super drive now we think of optical drive, but they had the super drive, which means it could read and write 800K, um, 400K, and 1.44 meg floppy disks all in the same drive. And there were a couple Macs that did that. They were um, probably, as far as I know, they were only like six maybe models that had that drive. Um, but anyway, I have no way to write 400K disks for this thing, so I'm hoping to use Serial to do that somehow. Anyway, those are some of my thoughts and, you know, just things I had to say about this unit. Um, I might do a video on it at some point in the future, so stay tuned for that. If you have any comments or suggestions or corrections, feel free to let me know, and I guess we'll see you in the next video.